Hello, Unity. Hello. Uh, how is everyone? Beautiful song. Beautiful. I love how Dana and I work together to just, we don't even talk about what we're doing, and it just makes a beautiful confluence. So, thank you. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, what who Teddy reminded me is the real founder of Unity, <laughs> Myrtle Fillmore. Many of you think Charles Fillmore was the founder, but he was the co-founder. Myrtle was the founder of, of Unity. Myrtle Fillmore was the founder of Unity because she worked the principles in her life and transformed herself, just similar to the story that uh, Dana sang. She was sickly as a child. She had tuberculosis. She worked the unity principles and came to a place where she was in full health. She chose her time of crossing from the veil of living into what we call the, the illusion of death. She went to the office one Friday and said, it's time for me to go to the other side and went home and rested and crossed. So she lived the unity principles and today we're gonna to take just a little bit of her work and uh, give you an idea of the core of what she did to make things work. So uh, there's one of her pictures Sweet, sweet picture. And one of the most popular things that she created was her statement of faith. And I have uh, half sheets in the back of the room on the table that you're welcome to take with you. I made uh, probably enough copies for everybody to take one. But let's start with that because we're going to end with that as well. So her statement of faith I'd like for you to, to say it along with me. I do not believe in evil. I believe in good. I do not believe in sin. I believe in truth. I do not believe in want. I believe in abundance. I do not believe in death. I believe in life. I do not believe in ignorance. I believe in intelligence. There are no discords in my being. Being is peace. My faith, my understanding, and life are becoming one. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Powerful statement. Those of you that have studied anything about unity see that those first few phrases are denials and affirmations. So uh, that's another talk. We're not going to get into that today. But um, generally, you deny the illusion and you state the truth to transform your consciousness. So uh, one of the few things that we have written from Myrtle Fillmore is her letters. There's a link on the uh, newsletter to a PDF of her book, a collected book of letters. And I want to just read you uh, part of one of her letters. God is the one perfect life flowing through us. God is the one pure essence, pure substance out of which our organism is formed. God is the power that gives us motive power the strength that holds us upright and allows us to exercise our members, the wisdom that gives us intelligence in every cell of our organism, every thought of our mind. God is the only reality of us. All else is but a shadow cast by some foolish belief or unwise combination of thoughts and the elements of being. When we let light flood us with its sunshine, all clouds vanish and we begin to see ourselves in new ways of doing. 
which lead to wholeness and health and real satisfaction and growth. So Myrtle recognized that truth is that there is no death, there is no illness, there is no evil. The only reality is God the good. And she lived into that. She began believing in illness and sickness and being sick and ill, and she transformed herself. And the way she did that is through uh, what we'll soon learn is called mind treatments. She gave herself mind treatments. And one of, in one of her other letters, she said this, God in the midst of us is a great steady stream of renewing and cleansing and vitalizing life. And we can have the use of this life if we will open up the channels of its flowing and ourselves draw from this source. We make the choice whether we open up to God's good. That's what we call free will. We have that free will. We learn through our human conditioning how to limit ourselves. We learn from our elders, from our caregivers, from our parents. We learn all of the rules of being which are not really true. And we spend our, our adult life growing and shedding those beliefs that are limiting, those limiting beliefs. So if, as humans, we're really uh, helped out in understanding when we have a visual. So I have brought a couple visuals today for you. Um, the next slide is truth and God's love. just flowing all the time, overflowing, just continually moving in and through us and all around us. That's what life is, is God's love. And what happens is we develop through our uh, understanding as, our ch as a child when we're dependent, we learn limitations on this flow of love. All of us are attracted to infants, to new babies. It's because they're 360 degree balls of light. They they're just came from source. They're, they're just glowing balls of God's love. And over time we learn these lessons of how we've got to behave or how we've got to keep our bodies safe, or all kinds of limiting beliefs. And uh, Myrtle and Charles Fillmore had a name for this. Uh, if you read any of the Fillmore's writings, uh, some of the words are a little uh, out of our common usage now. Um, and, and the next word I'm going to introduce to you is one of those. All of that set of limiting beliefs, Myrtle and Charles Fillmore called race consciousness. Now they, don't, they didn't mean race, they, back in the 1800s and the early 1900s, they didn't mean race as in this really ugly illusion that we have today of color of skin. That, that wasn't what they were talking about. What they were talking about is the human race that as humans, we've developed a set of beliefs and a set of consciousness that keep us separated from our creator. And so uh, Charles Fillmore in the revealing word said, the human race has formed laws of physical birth and death, laws of sickness and physical inability, laws making food the source of bodily existence, laws of mind that recognize no other source of existence except the physical. The sum total of these laws forms a race consciousness separate from and independent of creative mind. When creative mind sought to help men spiritually, 
the mind of the flesh opposed it and made every effort to solve its problems in its own way. The great need of the human family is mind control, not as in somebody else controlling your mind, but you taking the time to control your own mind. Jesus showed us that mastery is attained through realization of the power of spirit. So just as I had a visual for what uh, God's flow looks like, I have a visual for what race consciousness or human consciousness flow looks like. And it's <laughs> not quite so pretty. And, and when I found this picture, I, I wondered about this little plant here. That's either the most tenacious plant I've ever seen, or maybe this flow does, isn't on all the time. But there's a little plant growing right there. It's kind of kind of shows the the push of the divine to have life in everything. So race consciousness is what we have to work at in our own minds to overcome, to move out of the sense of race consciousness, of all the laws and rules and everything that uh, we've learned. We've got to unlearn those things and we've got to grow into a place where we go into that other flow and spend time there. The good news is, is even if we are in a place where we've got to take some of this on, when we're in that flow, it doesn't seem so significant, right? The amount of flow is one of the critical aspects of, of uh, finding your balance and finding where, where you can be. Well, I talked a minute ago about free will. Well, what we have is we have free will. And we each have as free will our hand on the handle of the flow. On whether we leave the spigot wide open or we start inching it down and letting the flow trickle down to nearly nothing. There are people in our world who do that with God's flow, turning off that spigot over time and just having a trickle come through. I, I believe as long as we're alive, we've got some trickle coming through, whether we want to or not, because we're connected to source. And so what, what we know is that everything in unity and in Christianity supports this idea that we're in charge of the flow, of where we find our flow. In the New Testament, 2 Corinthians, but whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away, for the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as, as we are changed into his glorious image. That's transforming through deciding that you're going to increase the flow of Spirit into your consciousness. So it's really... Not that we have one spigot in our being. It's really that we have two. We have one that's offered to us, which is race consciousness. One that's offered to us that's Christ consciousness. And we have our hands on both of them. And unity teaches us that our practice and our way of moving into Christ consciousness is 
to turn down the spigot of race consciousness and turn up the spigot of Christ consciousness. That's our job. That's how we transform. That's how the veil is lifted so that we become the image of, of God. So this is what uh, Charles Fillmore and, and Myrtle Fillmore would call mind treatment. This is the spiritual realization of God's truth for oneself or another, spiritual process or prayer by which man receives the healing power of God. A treatment is a prayer of faith and understanding for healing, harmony, wisdom, prosperity, or any other good that man may desire. Its object is to raise the consciousness of the one being treated to a high spiritual consciousness through which healing is accomplished. When we raise our consciousness into truth, then the illusion of all of the uh, lower vibration things just disappears. <clears throat> so, we're back at the start where we began. This is a mind treatment. This is the way that we shift. Uh, coming to Andrea's class on Wednesday, if you don't know about unity prayer, it's different than maybe what you were raised in, if you were raised in a traditional Christian household. It's affirming the truth of who we are. And so Myrtle Fillmore did that and what I'd like for us to do is as we move into the meditation, I'd like for us to first begin with this uh, statement of faith and then uh, move into a place of silence. Because what Myrtle learned was that silence is where you turn up the spigot of spirit, where you access that inner voice, where you access that God-given uh, trait of being able to connect to our Creator. And so silence is a way to turn down the spigot of race consciousness. And so we'll move into our meditation uh, with some music to begin with, and then we'll enter into the silence. So I'd invite you to to get comfortable in your chairs. Close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. If not, soften your gaze. Take a moment to allow your mind to quiet down. One of the best ways to do that is to follow your breath. And as you inhale, imagine your consciousness moving down into your body to feel the oxygen moving to every cell in your body, enlivening your body with life. And with each breath, bring your awareness more fully into your body and into each and every cell that has life given to you by your Creator. And as you move into that quieter space, allow yourself to access the God mind. that place of truth. I believe in good. I believe in truth. I believe in abundance. I believe in health. I believe in life.
I believe in intelligence. There are no discords in my being. Being is peace. My faith, my understanding, and my life are becoming one. And as our time in the silence comes to a close, I'd invite you to bring your awareness back to your body, back to your room, back to the room, gently, one by one, engage your senses sense of hearing, sense of smell, sense of touch, sense of taste, and then gently using the eyes of the heart, your sense of sight. 
gently opening your eyes and seeing the truth of God's love. And remember in the back of the room are Myrtle's statements of faith. She suggested that you do a mind treatment once a day, but not for too long, because she said it's also important to take that uh, consciousness into your daily life so that you can begin to work the Christ consciousness into everything that you do. And so thank you all for joining me this morning.